Hi. Okay, another, uh, another one that is uh, nice and short. So uh, we talked about um, uh, the fact that the, uh, the, the, the halting problem set, capital K, um, uh, can't be computed. You can't write a program that decides yes or no um, whether uh, phi e with input e halts. Okay. But so you say to yourself, well, but I can write a program that tries. How about if I uh, run uh, program 0 with input 0 for a step, and then I run program 1 with input 1 for a step, and then I come back and run program 0 with input 0 for another step, and then program 1 with input 1 for, for a second step, and then program 2 with input 2. And in that way, you sort of cycle around and around and around, running each program one, one more step, and the programs that halt will eventually halt in that scheme, and we're only interested in eventually at this point in the book. So, uh, so we, why am I not figuring out what halts there? And the answer, of course, is that you'll find out which things halt, all right, but you won't find out which things don't halt. I mean, you'll just keep trying them and trying them and trying them. And sometimes you might peek inside and look at the source code and say, this one is never going to halt, I can just see. But sometimes you're just trying and trying and trying, and you, you, you just, you, you know, you, it's, it's never halting, but who knows, maybe next time is the time. Okay, so that is to say, we see that there are sets where we can decide yes or no, but there are some sets where we find out a yes. We never find out a no. Those are called the computably enumerable sets. So a set is computable or decidable if its characteristic function is computable so that we can effectively de determine both membership and non-membership. And of course, effectively here means with a machine. So we can use a machine to determine membership and non-membership. We can write a program which you, you, you type in the number and beep, beep, buzz, buzz, ding, and it says yes, that's a member or no, that's not a member of the set. In contrast, and we have the set capital K as a kind of prototypical example, in contrast, a set of natural numbers is computably enumerable. You sometimes hear the words recursively enumerable or sometimes the abbreviation CE or RE if it is effectively listable. So again, I'm going to emphasize the effectively part here. What happened to my mouse? Ah, oh, there we go. If it's effectively listable, and you see the difference between determine and list. So effectively, again, means listable with a machine, because that's what we're interested in. We're interested in those things that are mechanically computable. But here, this is the difference between determine yes or no and just simply be able to say yes. So a set of natural numbers is computably enumerable if it's effectively listable. That is, it's the range of a total computable function, or else it's the empty set. We'll consider that the empty set is listable for the obvious reason. So the idea to picture for a computably enumerable set is that you fix some index e, you decide on some program, and then you just generate a stream of numbers. You, you kind of uh, input 0 and input 1 and input 2 and out are coming numbers. How does that relate to the original picture I gave of k? Why, I, I just ask, you know, when you have that sort of round robin or, uh, or dovetailing or time slicing picture of trying to produce all the phi e on e's by, by slicing among the different, uh, the, the different uh, 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 child processes, well, you might, what's the first thing output? What's the second thing output? What's the third thing output? You're getting a steady stream of output from that, from that uh, uh, procedure. So uh, a computably enumerable set can be finite. That's fine. You could find that, that when you ran program E, it only ever output a, a 3 and then never anything again. Or it just kept outputting a 3 over and over again. Maybe phi E0 is 3 and phi E1 is 3. Or it could be empty. Maybe phi E is such that it never holds no matter what the input is. So you never get any output. Or it can be that phi E, uh, uh, phi E, it outputs infinitely many elements. That can happen too, as is the case with K, with the, with the halting problem set. Okay, so here's some examples of computably enumerable sets. 1, 3, 5, a finite set. You could easily write a program that had the property that uh, no matter what input you gave it, it only ever outputs a 1, a 3, or a 5. The even numbers. Again, you can easily write a program. You could write a Turing machine. You could easily write a program that uh, if you give it an n, for example, beep, beep, buzz, buzz, ding, it outputs 2n. That would be phi e here. 
Another example of a computably enumerable set is the set of numbers y. So there's an x where y is phi 19 of x. I'm looking for all the outputs from phi 19. That is basically you run the Turing machine p19 on all possible inputs. And maybe you dovetail it to take care in case some inputs don't hold. Some inputs result in the machine not holding. And then you just write down all the outputs. You list all the outputs. That's computably listable, computably enumerable. Okay, well, the similar thing here is you look at all x's where phi 19 on x holds. So you ignore what the output is. You just simply output x if phi 19 on x holds, converges here, or if, the, or if the Turing machine, p19, when given input x, holds. Okay, so those are all some, some idea of you have a process that's running and running and running, and you're just watching to see what the output is. And when you have the numbers that are the result of such a process, you say that it's computably, for the obvious reason, enumerable because you're listing them first thing, second thing, third thing. Okay. So the basic idea here is that a set is computable. A set is computable if there's a Turing machine that decides membership. Decides membership. I can decide membership in the set of even numbers. I can decide membership in the set of prime numbers. I can decide membership in the set of perfect squares. I can decide membership in the finite set 0, 1, 2. You, you input a number x and you decide either yes or no whether x is an element of s. But with computably enumerable sets, what happens is that there's a machine that decides yes, but that machine might never decide no. So if you, for example, are looking at the set of E where program E on input E halts, we can decide yes on that, but we have trouble mechanically deciding no. So this sense of imbalance between the yes and the no gives rise to a, another, another definition, another, another term here that sometimes use computably enumerable sets are sometimes, sometimes called semi-computable or semi-decidable because you can decide yes, but you can't decide no. Okay, so uh, obviously, if a set is computable, then it's computably enumerable because you could just uh, input x equals 0. Do you get out a yes? Good. Print, print x. Input x equals 1. Do you get out a yes? No? Okay, don't print. Don't print 1. I input x equals 2. Do you get out a yes? O okay, print 2. So if, if you can decide the set, then you can list it. A set's computable if and only if both it and its complement are computably enumerable. And this is, this is one of the things I like about the subject because you sit back for a second and you put up your feet and you say to yourself, suppose I can list both the set and the complement and now you give me a number, 43, and I've got to determine whether 43 is in the set. Well, I just watch. Is 43 being produced in the list of things in the set? Is 43 being produced in the list of the things in the complement? I just watch. Eventually, 43 is going to appear in either list, then I know. So if I know both the set and the complement, if I can semi-decide both the set and semi-decide the complement also, why then I can, uh, I, I can determine completely where, whether an element is in the set or the complement. Okay? So there's, there's really sort of these conceptual aspects of the subject that I think are really nice. And then the corollary, which really I started out with, is that the holding problem set, capital K, the set of E where program E halts on input E, the, the capital K is computably enumerable, but its complement, the complement of K, is not. And the, uh, that follows from the lemma. It's a corollary because it follows from the lemma. Well, the first sentence follows because I already told you why it's true. The second sentence, that the complement is not computably enumerable, follows because if K is computably enumerable and K complement were also computably enumerable, then the lemma tells you that K would be decidable, but K isn't decidable. So, so it can't be the case that K complement is computably enumerable. Now, um, this is a short section because I only, only sort of have one thing to say today, and, uh, and, and that's this. So part of the interest that we have in these sets is philosophical. So many things in this subject lead a person to reflect on, what, uh, on sort of what it all means, the kind of big picture question. So by Church's thesis, we can think that in some sense, the set of, computa the set of computable sets consists of the only things that, that somehow that we'll ever know. The only things we'll ever know. We'll, we, we can determine things about the prime numbers 
mechanically. So we sort of know that in some absolute sense. With that thinking, with that mindset, if you think that the computable sets are the only thing we ever know for sure, with that thinking, the semi-decidable sets, the computably enumerable sets, are in some sense the limit of our knowledge. You know, you, you know that famous picture by Da Vinci with the, the, the guy who stretched out and you say, you know, uh, uh, your, 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 reach, your reach exceeds your grasp. Well, in some sense, the semi-decidable sets are the reach. You can just touch them. You know them half, you don't know them half. The decidable sets are your grasp. You know them. Okay. So, in some sense, semi-decidable sets are the absolute limit of what it is that we can know, what it is that we can ever know. By Church's thesis, we think that this is it. Okay, so we can determine membership, but we can't determine non-membership. Okay. Okay, very good, very good.